Uh, so today I'm briefly going to provide a quick overview of who we are, uh, the strategic setting or some strategic setting for the Australian and global prawn uh, aquaculture industry, and uh, forgive me if I use the word shrimp every now and again, uh, and an introduction to an opportunity to make Australia a truly global leader in the prawn aquaculture sector. So the Sea Farms Group is uh, a publicly listed company uh, with a market capitalisation of approximately $52 million. Uh, and although our history uh, has been in carbon, previously known as CO2 Group followed by Commodities Group, our main business area now is aquaculture, uh, operations and development of large-scale transformative aquaculture projects. Uh, in regard to our aquaculture operations, uh, Sea Farms Group is the owner and operator of 160 hectares of grow-out ponds, uh, hatchery and processing plant in North Queensland. Uh, we acquired these over the last 12 months and in that time we've invested in significant business processes, uh, upgrades in health and safety, accreditation and data management and we continue to drive efficiencies and increase yields uh, and overall uh, improvements in production processes across the organisation. We also offer a branded product into the marketplace, uh, Crystal Bay Prawns, uh, and we're opening export channels for the Australian prawn, farmed prawn sector using the same brand. We've all heard through numerous forums, not just at ABARES uh, in the last couple of days, but over previous years, uh, that Australia has a significant opportunity to become a leading participant in the supply of agricultural products to a growing Asian region. Uh, the food bowl of Asia has been a common catch cry in agricultural and political discussions over the last few years. Uh, but in essence, the demand for agri-food is growing and this growth is being driven by population growth and improved standards of living throughout Asia. In fact, there's a real possibility that the demand for protein will fall in the West, further reinforcing our geographical competitive advantage in key markets. Uh, and a significant feature of this increased demand for protein is that it's most clearly evident in the Asian region. Uh, this graph from uh, some early Helen Jensen's work uh, is an important one to consider when we think about demand for protein. There's a clear link between increasing personal wealth and protein consumption. Although this data was published in 2006 and relies on earlier data, so it can be considered a little old, uh, the trend and potential is clear, particularly when we look at where China has been. So China has probably moved along that curve a little bit, but what we can be certain of uh, is that as personal wealth increases in China and Asia in general, uh, the demand for protein will increase. An important part or corollary for that is that uh, seafood already makes up more than twice the protein source in Asia as it does in Europe and the US. 26% of dietary protein in Asia is based on seafood and given the size of Chinese and Asian populations, even a small shift in protein demand will have significant implications on seafood demand. So whilst food preferences can change, seafood is clearly an established preference in these markets. Now, uh, we've seen this graph a few times before, um, but having established that there's an expectation of increased demand for aquaculture, and in our case prawns, and in our region, I can turn our attention to the supply side. So Robert presented this slide earlier, and anyone who's been to any fisheries conference uh, over the last five, even 10 years, has probably seen this, gra this uh, graph ad nauseum. But it does underlie an important point that the required supply of marine protein, seafood, will not and cannot come from capture fisheries. Uh, wild fisheries have been static on a global basis in supply since the mid 80s. And this means that aquaculture has to fill the gap. Aquaculture now represents almost half of global seafood production uh, and the FAO forecasts that aquaculture production will grow by 60% uh, between 2010 and 2020. And recent work by the Global Aquaculture Alliance has indicated that aquaculture needs to increase production 7.2% per annum 
just to keep up with growing demand. Unfortunately, though, recent growth in aquaculture globally has been limited to 3 to 4 per cent, which is providing further pressure on the supply side. This and the cost competitiveness of aquaculture compared to producing other sources of animal proteins means large-scale aquaculture will play an increasingly important role in meeting the rising demand for animal protein. So given the clear role for aquaculture to meet demand, it's important noting some of the current production pictures. As you can see here, China is the world's largest producer of uh, prawns in this case, uh, and is a major exporter. This supply side, though, is a little confounded by the fact that China has recently shifted from a net exporter of seafood to a net importer. Disappointingly, and despite Australia's potential, we don't even rank. Uh, but clearly what we've done is we've been able to identify a market and we've also identified a looming market gap. So this leads to the next questions. So how can Australia be part of this supply and how is Australia currently positioned? So let's deal with the second question first. Uh, you can see here some comparisons with other aquaculture producing nations. And I wasn't particularly selective. Uh, it was reasonably random uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the aquaculture producing nations that I've chosen. So Australia is underrepresented and is an underperformer when it comes to developing opportunities in aquaculture. With some 25,000 kilometres of coastline, Australia really hasn't taken advantage of the opportunity. Um, we are outproduced by countries with smaller available coastlines. And as you can see here, we're actually beaten by New Zealand again. Um, in regard to Austra uh, prawn farming, uh, Australian prawn farming industry is currently around about 4,000 tonnes. It's been bouncing around from 3,400 3, to 4,200, settling at about 3,700 for the last 10 years. So Australia's prawn aquaculture sector hasn't shown any significant growth in that 10 years, while global production has increased by 66%. It should be noted that Australia has some very good, in fact, world-leading prawn farmers, and they are supported by extensive and world-class researchers. Um, but there are some other important considerations for Australia. What we can see is not really represented well in this graph, but global shrimp production appears to be peaking. We've probably said that once before in history, which was about 2000, 2001, but with recent, uh, with recent disease issues in Asia, there's a reinforcement of a very delicate supply side. There's, a limited suitable, there's limited suitable new areas for prawn farming on a global basis. Horizontal expansion will be limited and future growth is likely to be from vertical expansion or more tonnes per hectare, which by necessity equals smaller shrimp. There's also increasing consumer focus on food safety and clean food and sustainability across many market segments. Australia has a good story to tell. Provenance is, an important, uh, is important and Australian fresh foods are highly trusted in China. The opportunity for Australia is that price premiums are available for larger, high quality prawns, potentially offsetting Australia's higher cost of production. So Australia's current prawn farming industry, which I haven't shown on this, on this slide, sits primarily along the eastern coastline from Yamba in the south to Mossman in North Queensland. However, to unlock the potential in Australia's prawn aquaculture sector, development will need to be in the true north. Investors will be looking for year-round crops and the opportunity to design and operate facilities on a year-round basis to optimise their return on capital. Building on the work of CSIRO, which was presented at ABARES several years ago, uh, Sea Farms has undertaken significant studies in the north of Australia, including detailed GIS mapping, aerial surveys and ground truthing. 
And for those of you or those of us who were a part of that, uh, sitting for a week in a uh, helicopter over the top of Northern Territory tends to get a little shaky after a while. Uh, and there are a lot of significant suitable areas for aquaculture development in the north. And from this strategic and general overview, I can turn to offer now a concrete example of how Australia can become part of that global supply chain. So Sea Farms has recently entered into an access and option agreement on its preferred development site in the Northern Territory. And the next steps for Project Sea Dragon are underway. Uh, the agreement that we have provides sea farms with the ability uh, to apply for appropriate government approvals and land tenure. It allows us access to the site for technical due diligence and studies required to take the project through bankable feasibility. And it allows us to purchase the site under agreed commercial terms. The project aims to introduce prawn farming to Australia on a truly global scale. It will be a large scale, integrated, land-based aquaculture project producing world-scale volumes of black tiger prawns for export markets. The development will be rolled out in four to five stages over several years and require an investment of circa 1.5 billion US dollars. The result will be the production of 100,000 tonnes per annum, generating some 800, 800 million US dollars in revenue. The 10,000 hectare grow out facility will be supported by feed mills, hatchery and broodstock facilities, power station, processing plant and storage and export facilities. The investment will require the development of suitable port facilities for both export of finished product, but also for the delivery of raw materials. Uh, questions to be answered include the where, what location provides the greatest economic returns for each of the infrastructure requirements. Project Sea Dragon, when complete, will contribute to Australia reaching at least part of its aquaculture potential, with other investments leveraging off the infrastructure, expertise and investment confidence. Project Sea Dragon will see Australia as a top 10 global shrimp producer and will create some 1,600 sustainable long-term jobs in the north with a range of skills required in diverse fields, including aquaculture technology, administration, human resources, electrical, mechanical and trades, processing and food safety, veterinary and animal health, and research and training. Employment locations will be spread throughout the top end, including Darwin, Kununurra, Exmouth and Lejeune. Employment, uh, sorry, and further indirect employment opportunities will be available in logistics, science, support and education. Additionally, on top of this, our current Queensland operations act like a pilot, pilot for the Project Sea Dragon. And this has helped to establish some important building blocks for us, including the development of uh, farm management teams, systems and processes, science and brand and product range expansion. This is a real, concrete and doable project. And as recognised in the Green Paper on developing uh, Northern Australia, aquaculture provides real opportunities to provide economic diversification in the North. Projects of this kind obviously require some level of enabling. Robust government support is a requirement to ensure that we can drive project development in the North and we don't spend years talking about things that can happen. Cooperation and speed between government and governments and departments is critical. Moreover, to realise the opportunity, there needs to be credible, tangible projects with, robust, with a robust business case like Project Sea Dragon and governments as willing partners. For multi-jurisdictional projects such as this, the governments such as territory, state and federal levels all have a role to play in developing the North. Free trade agreements have wider implications, but as we heard this morning, it's really about market demand. Um, and as Minister Trust noted this morning, infrastructure development in the north is critical. Simple things that get taken for granted in the east, including all weather roads, port facilities suitable for frozen products, and social infrastructure to support workforces are a requirement. 
There are significant training opportunities for local and regional residents, including Indigenous employment and development. The breadth of employment opportunities is significant through both construction and operational phases. So just in conclusion, uh, Sea Farms Group, we are a major domestic farm prawn supplier. So we're a doer. We're not just sitting in an office saying we can do these things. Um, there is a major gap in the global prawn market emerging. Um, the north of Australia is well positioned to supply that market. Uh, and we should really stop talking and let's start doing with tangible real projects in the north. And to realise the opportunity, we need uh, credible, tangible projects with robust business cases like Project Sea Dragon and governments as willing partners with private investors.